Hi, everybody. Thank you all for coming. It's nice to see you all. I'm glad you're all well. That's uh, the first thing that we, uh, we're concerned about. I'd like to let you know that um, lunch today was provided by New York Presbyterian Hudson Valley Hospital. Uh, they're always uh, very generous with our Yorktown seniors. Um, if, could we all, do we have a flag here? Okay. Could we all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? Yeah, take the mask yeah. when you're talking. We could have a moment of silence for our uh, committee member, Gil Kaufman, who passed away. Uh, we could, if we could just take a moment of silence for that. Thank you so much. May he rest in peace. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Okay. So. I want to take a moment to thank Jennifer Ferry, the optometrist who was here last month. Um, she gave us some wonderful ideas about uh, taking care of your eyes as you age. And right after she gave that message to us, there was a, a lengthy article in the Yorktown News about that very subject. Um, little things that perhaps you almost didn't know why they happen, whether it be for medic because you're taking certain medications or certain situations that arise. So I'd like to take this opportunity to, uh, to thank her uh, for that wonderful presentation. I'd also like to take a minute here before we get into our program to thank the employees of the town. We have a lot of people who do a lot of work to make things function and They've been especially helpful to us, to our last meeting, and getting this whole um, senior advisory back together and going. And one of them is here, Jim Moderano, who is uh, having his lunch right now, so we won't disturb him. But um, the people at Downing Park, the people in town, the supervisor's office, Diana Qua I mean, they've all been very helpful in uh, try, attempting to get us going again. So for that, I'd like to thank them all, our supervisor, uh, Slater. Today we're gonna take time to uh, talk about a gentleman, a veteran, 100-year-old veteran, uh, Lenny Tosto. I have gotten spelling of his name in 15 different ways, but hopefully this is the right one. Anthony Tony Grasso, who, as you all know, is a very active individual in town and uh, is going to tell us a little bit about him. And I think our councilman, Ed Lachterman, what happened to him? Oh, here he is. Okay. As well. So, uh, Tony, would you like to get up? Okay. Take your time. Uh, the mic is over there. The reason we decided to do this this month is because our next meeting will be after Veterans Day. So uh, we wanted to do it now. And he was supposed to be here, but I understand he has to have a procedure today. So um, he will not be. But Tony has prepared a little dissertation for us. Okay. Thank you, uh, Rosemary. I've had the pleasure of knowing Lenny for many, many years. If you've ever been in the mall early in the morning, you would always see tables of guys sitting there having coffee and whatnot. And unfortunately, right now, it's got down to two people, Lenny and myself. Life has been fair to most of us, but Lenny is an unusual kind of a guy. If he needed help, he would call. Sitting here is our councilman. 
He would call Ed and say, Ed, I'm out of Cheerios and I'm out of bananas. Ed would go across town, go to the store for him, and bring him his, food, his, his request. But what about this guy, Lenny? We're talking about veterans now. Lenny was drafted early, part of the war, the Second World War. Was up at Fort Edwards, Massachusetts, where he did his training. And uh, he was in, he had really two jobs. He was learning how to use any aircraft equipment, and he also drove a three-quarter ton uh, vehicle that picked up food to be distributed among the various groups. When they went overseas, they landed in Africa. And those of us that are old enough to remember that time, it was a dangerous and, to me, a very calculating uh, uh, mission. But we survived that. He went through Africa doing his normal job and then into his home country, Sicily, and fought there as well. They brought him back to England where they trained for more treatments. Beyond that, he didn't talk much about what they did in Europe. Whether he did or not, I, I don't know, but someday I'm going to ask him. Now, I, I don't know if Irving, you're going to talk about anything about the VA? No. Not at this okay. point. So, coming home, those of us that were in the service, use the Veterans Administration as a location for us to get a quick, get things that we need. You see the glasses I'm wearing, the hearing aids that I have, the scooter that I run around with, the scooter that Lenny runs around with, are all furnished by the Veterans Administration. The Veterans Administration has a lot of things. If your husband's or if any men were here that were in the service, they should join. If you have the discharge papers, or the 214s as they're called, go down and have them register. Why? Well, number one, your medications are cheaper. You can get a 90-day supply of any medication for $15, which is a big savings. If you need doctors, they have doctors of every type. I myself uh, go for treatments of different things and different things that are wrong with me. But the service is there. If you want to join and you have the discharge papers, all you have to do is register and you will get a card with a picture on it and everything that's wrong with you. In any place in the United States where there's a VA hospital, you're your uh, conditions are right there. All they have to do is bring it up on the computer and it's there. I get my medications by mail. I call up, it's an automatic system, and within three to five days, I get my medication. Now, what are some of the things that you can get? They have a video connect for home visits with your doctor, your outside doctor and your inside doctor. They have a guide for wellness. They also have, of all things, legal services. You need a lawyer, they supply you with a lawyer. If you need pharmaceuticals, they got the period there. You call up and you get what you want or what you'd like to get. There are times when you have to use an outside uh, service. Uh, I had use for one hour the uh, surgeon that takes care of my knee, as an example. He left, but no one notified me. When I called up for an appointment, they said, well, use an outside doctor and they'll take care of you. So I got a, a local doctor here, gave me the shot that I need, and it was taken care of. So the services are there if, if you had a discharge and uh, any of the women that are here whose husbands are uh, 
with or without us, even without us, you can register if you have a 214, which is a discharge paper for Second World War, or a two, which is a sheet of paper. It's got a number on it. It tells you everything you did while you were in the service through the MOS system. Uh, if I have a few minutes, I'll answer some questions that you might have. If not, I'll be happy to sit. Could, could you tell us a little bit about Lenny, where he was born, yeah, where he grew I'm up? sorry. Could you tell us a little bit about Lenny, where he was born and where he grew up, and well, when he was in the war and all of that sort of thing? Unlike myself, I was born here uh, in Westchester County. Lenny came from the famous place south of us, the Bronx. And he uh, grew up there. He learned the trade. He was a machinist by trade. He started a business making these, uh, like what they call them, these pads for computers and things like that. He, would make them for IBM as, an, a, a, uh, uh, as a customer. It's what they built, uh, I forget the name of it, but they would build their computers on these pads. Unfortunately, after several years, he lost that to China, which uh, just about put him out of business, but he went into something else. But Lenny was always on the ball when it came to making a living. He raised his family here, uh, and his, uh, his grandchildren and great-grandchildren live within a short distance of uh, Yorktown. Uh, but Lenny was very active, even locally, in a lot of the things that he participated in. In the early days, uh, many people would call him from Jefferson Village as a problem. If they had a problem with plumbing, he would help them repair their plumbing. If they had trouble with painting, he would advise them how to get that done. But he was always there helping people. And uh, right now, at the age of 100, he's very limited as to what he can do. But he does get around. He still drives, which we try to encourage him to give that up. But uh, Lenny is not one that would give up. He lives his own way and his own life the way he the way he lives. So, I said, if anybody have any questions, I'll be happy to answer. answer. What's his name? Could you speak a little louder, please? His name is T O S T O. T O S T O. Testo. Yes. Okay. Yes. Anybody have any questions or any comments? All right, Ed, did you want to say something about yes. Lenny? Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. I was just going to say a few words to Tony. Uh, here, go ahead. You're welcome to hang out. <laughs> That's OK. Thank you, Tony. So you know, I, I want to, I'd like to bring a different light of Lenny as well. You know, I, I will celebrate his service to our country. Uh, I, I had the pleasure of hanging out with him last Sunday for quite a few hours. Uh, he uh, was invited by the president of the Chamber of Commerce, Sergio Esposito, to cut the ribbon at the street fair this year. And uh, he said it was a great time, uh, from what Tony was telling me, and, and he definitely enjoyed it. But I went to pick him up, and then I, my wife and I drove him back home. And we had some great conversation. It took about 45 minutes <laughs> for, for, for a ride to one, down the end of 132, because we were talking so much. Uh, Tony was right about most of the stuff from the VA, but I, I do have to correct Tony because he's very proud, of, uh, or uh, Lenny's very proud. He bought his own scooter because he has a little 40-pound fold-up scooter. Uh, and his car, as Tony says, he still drives. Not only does he drive, he has a brand-new Dodge uh, Charger. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and he's impressed that the speedometer goes to 140 miles an oh, hour. Oh, wow. <laughs> Now, I didn't ask him if he tested it or not, but um, so uh, also, you know, Tony had mentioned and one of the things he was talking about, you know, he, he spoke about uh, meeting his wife, his, his first apartment, his moving up to Yorktown, 
uh, and as you said, providing for his family. He, he wanted to make sure that his, his wife was a stay-at-home mom and was with the kids. Good traditional values, very patriotic. Um, and and he, he did tell me the story about when uh, Jefferson Village got going and going in for the, to help the people. And he did all of that volunteering in the community. He did that as, as, a, as a love, you know, of going out and helping people. Um, but, uh, the, you know, he's a wonderful gentleman. Uh, he's planning on coming to the Veterans Day Parade, which this year is Sunday the 14th. Uh, it'll be running from the Lakeland High School to the Shrub Oak Library. I know that Paul Martin is putting it together, is uh, having a veterans seating section this year. Uh, so it's not just the chairs up on the DS table or the, the stage there. So uh, I invite everyone to come out. The Lions will be doing their hot dogs. And you get a chance to meet Lenny. Uh, we think we're going to have him in one of the World War II vets. And I know, uh, World War II Jeeps, I'm sorry. And I know, Tony, you like to ride in one of those Jeeps too. So we'll get you in one as well. What is the date, Ed? Could you tell us the Su date? Sunday, November 14th. The parade starts at 2 o'clock from Lakeland High School. For those of you who want to march, if you're military or with a group or a politician, uh, the, uh, the gathering, uh, or what they call the muster, will be at 1 p.m. at the high school, and any time between 1 and 1.45 when you get there. Thank you. Uh, and and I, I did also want to focus on one thing uh, Mr. Grasso was speaking about. Uh, which is if you have questions about veteran benefits, the town of Yorktown does now also have a, a Veterans Advisory Council. Uh, if you have any questions on that, you could contact me. Uh, you could go through the supervisor's office. Matt was instrumental in making oh, sure that, uh, that that, that uh, council came to be. I, I sit out as the town board liaison on that and we could help guide you and get you in front of the right person if you have any questions. And, uh, and I will also say that the supervisor's office is a great resource. Uh, as Tony mentioned, uh, Lenny would have me do his shopping. Well, I was more than happy to, but it was only because he went through uh, the young lady sitting back there right now, Jenna Belcastro, who works with uh, Supervisor Slater and said, hey, I'm in trouble, I need, I need to have someone help me shop. And she was able to reach out to me, but the supervisor's office is a phenomenal resource for you all. Please don't hesitate to use it. We're here to work with you, to help you. That is our job, and uh, we enjoy it, trust me, because it's, it's not about the pay. <laughs> uh, so thank you all. Uh, Thank you to all of our veterans. Actually, can I ask all of our veterans that are here to just stand up, just so we could recognize them? They just sat. They just sat. And Tony, <laughs> Tony's not going to stand. Thank they you, sir. All right. Well, thank you. Thank Gentlemen, you very much. Service and uh, everyone have a great day. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Um, Rose, Rose, yes. can I ask something? Sure. Uh, just a quick thing on the VA. If you're registered, if you're registered there, male or female, because if the female is a veteran or the dependent of a veteran, you can get your medications. As a point of view, a uh, point of information, uh, I was taking Eliquist. My first prescription was 140 dollars for the do uh, dose that I had to take. It then went to $440, which is outrageous. I got that prescription transferred to the VA for $7. That's what your prescription will cost. Any medication that comes through the VA, you'll get it at that cost. So does that mean that I have to join the army to get my no, eligibility? Oh. No, if your husband served, you're the dependent of that individual. Does it matter? My husband served in the Italian army. So. In the Italian yes. army? <laughs> then uh, he's SOL. <laughs> no, but... We're uh, joking, of course. Uh, Tony and I are veterans there. You get 
Oh, you also get a annual physical once a year, glasses once a year. Same thing. I just went down uh, the other day, Wednesday or Thursday, for my annual phys uh, examination for optometry. So you'll get your glasses. I have been getting glasses. I have been getting mine since 1955, 56. I have been registered with the VA. So it's better if you can get your chance, get registered as a dependent or as a veteran. And the only thing, as Tony said, <clears throat> you need your DD-214. That is your separation papers from the VA. And that'll get you anything, anywhere in the country. And I think in the world, too, you can do the same thing. You'll get your medications, wherever it be. I just want to, I just want to add one more thing Take to that. Take the last one. Um, I take Tony to the vets, veterans, whenever he has to go. Tony no longer is driving. I have to say, it's almost a pleasure to go there. There isn't, I've been going up there for quite a few years. I have never passed someone in the hallways or outside without them saying, hello, can I help you? Is there anything I can do for you? The grounds are meticulous. The buildings, absolutely cleanliness to you could eat off the floor. So we've had very, very good experiences there. Anybody that he has dealt with there, because sometimes we don't understand, they have been very, very helpful. So if anyone is in need of using that, don't be afraid that you might not know or you might not know where to go. When you get there, there's someone there always to help you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yes. I don't know if they mentioned, but they also give you walkers. Yes. They will come into the house and fix up the bathroom for you. You know, Walk the tub and... The Pardon me? She is. Yeah. Okay, now we can hear you. Can you hear me? Now. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. A walker, nice walkers, not the aluminum ones. They will accommodate you ways that you're not aware of. They are above and beyond. Now, we didn't know that. But thank God we found out. But they send a man in to fix the bathroom the way you need it. Um, I can't go on and on and on and on. It's unbelievable. Don't hesitate. Don't say you're not able to do it. You know and qualify. Try. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for your comments. Um, we're now going to ask the Yorktown Supervisor, Matthew Slater, to come up and give us a bit of an update. Supervisor, how are you? Very well, thank you. Two minutes, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good afternoon, everyone. It's great to see everybody here. Great to see everyone together. I know that uh, the smiles are definitely bigger when we're together, right? Right. Like to celebrate uh, each other and spending time together. I know that the last uh, few uh, months and the last year and a half have been very challenging. Uh, we appreciate our friends here at the Capolini Center allowing us to utilize their gym. Appreciate, of course, our Parks and Rec Superintendent, Jim Moderano, uh, who's so supportive of our seniors and all yes. the programming that they're able to provide uh, in helping us with events like this. And, of course, the best producer in government access TV, Tom Cangela. Right, Tom? Always, always there for us, so it's great. Uh, just a couple of updates uh, just to hit on quickly. Uh, so... Uh, COVID-19 is still around. I think it's important that we all recognize that, uh, which is why we're doing things a bit differently here. Uh, as a reminder, when you're coming into our facilities, town facilities, masks are required. That's for your own safety and the safety of our, uh, of our employees, uh, something that we continue to uh, request of our, of our residents. But government continues to operate. Town government continues to work. We haven't missed a beat. We've been making great progress in a lot of different ways. I was talking to some of the doctors in town. They're seeing an uptick in rhinovirus. Uh, there's also an uptick in uh, some sinus infections, so just be aware of that. Uh, again, you know, I know a lot of people don't like them, but that's sometimes why masks, just in general, uh, may be a, a good practice to, uh, to, to stick by. Um, but just as always, uh, the flu vaccine is, is, of course, available. If you haven't been vaccinated for the flu yet, 
Uh, we do have our next flu vaccine being offered by the town in conjunction with Save More Pharmacy. Uh, that'll be Saturday, October 16th from 1 to 2 p.m. And that's going to be over at the Sparkle Lake Admin Building uh, off of Granite Springs Road. So if you haven't gotten your flu shot, uh, this is the second or third that we've been able to partner with a local pharmacy on uh, to provide that important service to our community. Uh, That's free of charge, correct? Free of charge. You just need to bring your license and your, and your uh, if you do have your insurance or, or Medicare or Medicaid card, whatever it might be, they just take a copy of it. Uh, COVID boosters. Uh, we had our first COVID booster clinic. Uh, the other day, right now, only if you've received Pfizer, that's the only COVID booster that's been approved by the federal government. Um, but we did fill up very, very quickly with residents uh, looking for their COVID boosters. Uh, we are hopeful that we will see an approval for Moderna in the next week or so, uh, possibly Johnson & Johnson as well. Uh, but my commitment to you all and to our community and our staff's commitment is once those boosters become available, we will continue to provide them here locally uh, because I know like Jenny over here went down to the, the city to get her COVID-19 shot and to me that's just unacceptable and we should make sure that there's a local option and local availability and so we have done a great job with that so far. We've vaccinated nearly 4,000 Yorktown residents right here in this gym uh, which was pretty incredible. Uh, I think we were the only municipality that went out on our own and, and found ways to provide vaccines for people here. Uh, and then again, we're going to be doing the same with the COVID boosters as they become available. Uh, so we'll make sure to communicate that to Rosemary and you can get that out to your members. And um, I encourage you all to utilize the town's website. We provide all that information right there. Uh, and if you haven't, I don't, if you do like, if you do get emails and you haven't signed up to receive public notices yet, I encourage you to do so. You'll get everything about the town right on your computer, uh, whether it's events or road closures or uh, meeting agendas or events. Uh, I think I said events twice, but that's because we have so many of them. Right. Uh, you can get all that via email through the town's website. One of the things I wanted to talk about also was uh, the winter. Uh, we are expecting, and if you've seen the news articles, uh, oil is supposed to be going up, and that's not fun for anybody. Uh, but there is a program through the town uh, that you can, there's a list of companies that provide a discount and you can get that right on our town's website. You can call our office, talk to my assistant Jenna. She can provide the list for you if you would like to engage in that. Um, you then go and speak to, you then call the actual company and they'll lock you in on a, on a specific rate. Uh, and I think right now it's important that as many residents, especially our seniors, are aware of the program. Uh, because again, we are expected to see a 30% increase in fuel and oil uh, prices this winter. That's what they're telling us to expect. And of course, our friends at Reliable Oil can probably attest to that. Uh, but so again, if anyone's interested in participating in the town's discount heating oil program, uh, please either go onto the town's website or call, contact my office, 962-5722, extension 201. You're going to speak with my assistant, Jenna and she can help direct you to the necessary information so you can take advantage of that program. Uh, there's other programs as well. There's HEAP. There's, a, there's other state and county uh, programs that are offered. Uh, again, all that information available online, and I encourage anybody uh, who qualifies to take advantage of it. The, uh, the, self, the safe driving class will be back in December. Uh, that's going to be on the government access channel, so we'll be providing that uh, again on channel 20 if you're, uh, if you're an Optimum customer. 33 for Fios. Uh, again, that just provides uh, safe driving tips uh, for our seniors. Uh, we had it on last year. Uh, we had a very good response, and so we are providing it yet again. Just a couple of updates on, uh, oh, before I go to updates, I also want to uh, recognize our police department. Uh, we had our uh, 1013 uh, is officer down, and Councilman Tommy Diana had a great idea of having their award ceremony on 1013. Uh, so on Wednesday, this past Wednesday, which was October 13th, uh, the police department came up to Granite Knolls and they introduced three new police officers, um, two of which have been with us for almost a year now, but we haven't had a chance to gather in that, in that fashion uh, yet. Uh, so they introduced our three new police officers. They recognized two of our outstanding detectives who retired. Uh, and then they recognized uh, some of this, the amazing and heroic work by some of our officers. Um, some of the things that they deal with on a daily basis that we don't think occurs here in the town of Yorktown, but the fact is it does. 
It does. Uh, whether it's busting uh, 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 individuals who are trafficking drugs on Route 6, um, whether it's uh, uh, going to a, a house where there was a um, uh, where there was an individual, unfortunately, who uh, had a knife and was uh, you know threatening to harm themselves. All these things they do happen. They do happen here in our community. Uh, but I got to tell you, the police department is just incredible, and you know they. From the top down, Chief Noble, our mm -hmm. command staff, mm -hmm. all the way through uh, to, uh, to our patrol. Um, incredible levels of professionalism, incredible levels of integrity, uh, and they get the job done. And they have a vested interest in our community. They have a vested interest in protecting our community. Um, I know many of them because I grew up with them. Uh, we went to school together, we played sports together, and those who didn't grow up here, they now mostly are raising their families here. Uh, and they have a vested interest in this community, and it's just so great to see. And, and I encourage you, I know that Tom Angela put this up on the Government Access uh, channel, uh, so you can watch the ceremony and you can hear these, and, and Judge, I'm sure you can relate since you saw a lot of these uh, types of things come before you on the bench. Um, but you can hear for yourself the passion uh, that these individuals have for our community and for protecting us. And, uh, I couldn't be prouder. I believe they are the best police department in Westchester County, Very and I would challenge anybody uh, across the state, and I think that uh, our guys would definitely, and our staff would definitely come out on top. I mean, they are just so good, and so uh, I just wanted to make that point. As for some updates, uh, we did have a very interesting, I'm not going to get, I'm not going to say too much on it uh, just yet. Uh, but if you didn't watch town board meeting on Tuesday, there was a proposal for a adult living uh, complex proposed by Toll Brothers. Toll Brothers is one of the nation's leading residential development companies. Uh, it's actually, uh, I'm actually quite proud of the fact that Toll Brothers was, is actually coming to Yorktown to propose a, a 55 plus housing complex, 130 units um, over on Catherine Street. So the field home uh, had sold. If you didn't, uh, if you didn't know, when you're coming up Catherine Street, going up towards the field home, the property on your left was still owned by the Field Home Foundation. They were in contract for quite some time. There was actual, actually a, a, an approval given about five years ago. Um, that project has since fallen through, and they went back out uh, to solicit additional proposals, and they are now in contract with Toll Brothers. And so Toll Brothers came to the town. Uh, with their initial proposal of 130, 135, I believe, uh, units, um, all 55 plus townhouses for sale, no rental. Uh, and so that's something that we're going to be taking a good, hard look at. Uh, they will be uh, adhering to the same standards, same process, same laws that every other proposal that comes before the town does. Um, obviously, environmental impacts, we're going to be looking at traffic. We talked about um, their impact on our sewer system. So all those things are part of the process that uh, we're going to see moving forward. But it's still, it's still exciting that a company with the caliber of Toll Brothers uh, came knocking on the door here in Yorktown. Will those be market rate? Market rate, yep. Uh, so that was the, one of the things. The other thing I wanted to talk about was our park improvements. Uh, again, we've got some of the best parks you can find in Westchester County. Uh, we've made nearly, I believe it's not nearly, it's, it's pretty easily proven historic investments in our parks in the last 18 months despite the pandemic. Uh, we believe that our parks are gems within our community, they're a quality of life issue and so now when you drive up to Turkey Mountain, if you haven't been up there in a while, uh, you're not driving, you feel like you're, originally you're feeling like you're doing some off-roading uh, and you needed, a, you needed a truck to get up there but thanks to Highway, Superintend uh, Highway Superintendent Paganelli, it's been paved uh, so you have a nice smooth uh, driveway to get up to Turkey Mountain. Uh, we just uh, completed Chelsea Park. Uh, Chelsea Park, we transitioned uh, because we actually, for the first time, uh, started doing these playground safety audits. And, and I know that uh, uh, you may not think seniors in playgrounds, but I know you bring your grandchildren there, so I think it's important, obviously, that any child who goes on a playground uh, is, that we know, is safe. And so we, we started these playground safety audits. Uh, the playground over at Chelsea was deemed unsafe by that audit. Uh, it was uh, so outdated that we couldn't even get the parts to bring it up to snuff. Uh, and so working with our Parks and Rec Commission, working with uh, the YAC softball uh, program, uh, we transitioned that, pro that park that pl uh, park from a, a playground with a softball field to now it's like a, 
a softball oasis where you have really? batting cages and, and it's just beautiful stuff that they did. Uh, and so, um, again, just making record investments in our parks. We've made some improvements over at Sparkle Lake. Uh, we've added security cameras to places here in the Heights. I'm not going to tell you exactly where because they're security cameras and they're there for a reason. Uh, and we've made record upgrades to our park department's equipment and fleet. Uh, just the other week, we approved uh, a, a purchase of $125,000 for for a new lawnmower, things that haven't been done in nearly 20 years. And so uh, we believe in our Parks Department. We believe that the Parks Department reflects the quality of life here in the town of Yorktown, and, and we're continuing to make important investments in them uh, to make sure that A, uh, they're up to our standards, B, that we know that they're safe, uh, and, uh, and C, provide the amenities that so many families come to enjoy here in Yorktown. And again, to our Parks and Rec Superintendent for doing a great job working with me yes, and our yes. finance staff and our whole town board on that. And lastly, I know it's, uh, it's Rosemary Patio's favorite topic of conversation these days, our overlay districts. Uh, our overlay districts are moving forward in a very methodical process. Uh, we are in the middle of, of, uh, of an EAF, which is an environmental assessment form. We are doing studies on traffic, on uh, impact to our school district, on potential build out, meaning how many units could come to the Heights Hamlet or to the Osceola Hamlet with the zoning changes that have been proposed. Uh, we are anticipating to be able to bring this forward to the public next month. Uh, and I think it's very exciting. I think it's a very exciting because it's gonna provide opportunities for very creative projects, opportunities for reinvestment in our community, uh, and really bring things that we all, I think, when we have these conversations about what, what's going on in the Heights or what's, what's going on in our business hamlets, it's going to allow for a lot of the things that we've talked about to come to fruition. Uh, and so uh, we are working very diligently on this. Um, we are working with our planning department. We've hired uh, one, of the, uh, one of the leading planning consultants in the region uh, to help us on this. Uh, they've, been, they've received numerous awards and actually in overlay district work. Uh, and again, it's, I think it's going to be a milestone step for this community. Um, I keep hearing, and, and I mean this with no disrespect to anyone, uh, but I keep hearing, and I think we all can agree that the Heights and our business hamlets look tired, they look outdated, uh, and they definitely can use uh, some love. And when you talk to our property owners and, and those in the industries uh, that provide that type of investment, uh, they go back to the fact that the zoning laws in the town, um, pr they produce what, what they provide. And so we need to update the zoning laws uh, which is what we're trying to do, and that those upgrades to the zoning laws will provide, again, the ability for people to bring new, creative, and exciting investment to the town. Uh, so we are moving that forward, uh, continue to move that forward, and we look forward to bringing that forward to the public officially next month in the month of November, and we'll be moving that to uh, a public discussion and then eventually a public hearing, and then hopefully, um, hopefully moving it into implementation. As you know, Mr. Supervisor, we've had many discussions about yeah. this. Um, Excuse me. We are living a lot longer, and we've come to the conclusion, my husband and I included, that we probably will not be able to do things exactly as we're doing them now, and we have to look for options, mainly living options, and we certainly want to stay within the town of Yorktown. Mm -hmm. So this is a discussion that we've had many times, and also from the point of view of the businesses that are available, especially the commercial businesses, we have found that we also don't wish to drive right. an hour or 45 minutes to do our shopping, that we would like more localized uh, businesses, and in some ways, sometimes even walkable, even if not, certainly can't walk from my house down to the downtown, but, um, you know, parking in a certain place and then being able to walk about and do one's shopping. This is important, I think, for seniors because and elders because it is also a social event. Yes, it is. We always looked upon shopping as a social event where we interacted with people. Of course, now sometimes when you go into the stores, it doesn't quite meet that criteria, but it's something we'd like to encourage because I think it's an important thing for the town to... Uh, to help our seniors and also to help our businesses thrive. So you know how, how we feel about it, many of us, so I'm sure. I do, I'm sure I we'll, do. I'm sure we'll keep asking you about it. I know, it. And, I, and I also, I've neglected to mention that uh, two weeks ago, we actually held a roundtable 
uh, myself, uh, I was joined by Councilwoman Alice Roker, uh, our town clerk, Diana Quast. Uh, it, was, uh, it was hosted by the town, the Business Council of Westchester, uh, and the Yorktown Chamber of Commerce. We had Sergio Esposito, the president of the chamber in attendance, uh, as well as about 15 commercial property owners, including the Jefferson Valley Mall um, and, and a whole host of others. And I got to tell you how pleasantly surprised I was. Good. Pleasantly surprised because I went around to each and every one of them and I said, where are you with your, with your vacancy? And most of them said they're either at capacity or near it. And the Jefferson Valley Mall reported an 89% occupancy at this point. Good. 89%, which is terrific. And I think that people really deserve, they deserve a lot more credit from the community for being able to reach that milestone because we all know that they've reached some pretty dark days at one point. Mm -hmm. uh, and for them to be able to overcome uh, a lot of the economic downturns that we experienced, seeing a lot of these uh, national stores close, that was not a, a product of the, or result of the Jefferson Valley Mall, that was a product of the national economy. Um, and they're still at 89% occupancy, I think is a terrific sign uh, we just actually celebrated the opening of their new beer garden, um, which, is, which they brought in Peaksco Brewery. Mm -hmm. And they're now in the Jefferson Valley Mall. Uh, they're anticipating the opening of two new food court uh, tenants. And they're continuing to push the env envelope to find new things. Um, one of the things that we're, I'm hoping that we're going to be able to do this year also, to your point, uh, Rosemary, is a, a concerted shop local effort for the holidays. I think it's very important that when we go out there this year uh, to purchase our gifts that we think outside the box, but we think Yorktown. Because we have wonderful, wonderful retail stores here, not just here in the Jefferson Valley Mall. You go to a place like Wishes, you go to some of our farms. By the way, and, I've, and shame on me for forgetting, but Fall Farm Weekend is going to be next weekend. Yeah. And we have eight participating farms here in Yorktown. I mean, my wife, my mom, my grandmother, they're all counting down the days till the Hallmark Christmas Channel is up in action. Uh, I can tell you that I think that Hallmark should be at some of these farms and, and featuring those farms in some of their programming for the holidays because they are spectacular. Uh, and so, again, going back to, to the, the shop local effort, uh, we talk about how we want a growing and thriving economy. Well, I think it's time we start supporting our local economy mm -hmm. and thinking about our local places, our local retailers, and thinking outside the box. I mean, you can go to Thompson's Cider Mill, which is here in the town of Yorktown, down in the Kichewan Hamlet. It's, it's the most southern you know, apple cider producer uh, in, in the state, uh, closest to New York City in our region. You can go do your holiday shopping there and get a very unique uh, you know, apple cider, spiked apple cider. They even have wine at this point. Uh, and that's something that you may not think about as a, as a holiday gift, but it's something that's here. We also have um, White Oak Farm, which is the, the, the New York State's most southern commercial producer of maple syrup. Again, maybe that's not, you know, my kids, I have to think of toys, right? But some people, they may appreciate a nice jar of, uh, of maple syrup or honey because they have amazing honey too. I'm just saying there's plenty of things that we can, and plenty of ways for us to support our local businesses here and, in town. And their maple syrup is fabulous. 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 Yeah, it's, it's the best. It's really good. I used to get it from Vermont because my granddaughter is there. Yep. But now we get it from there. It's yep. really great. And then again, you go over to you go over to Wilkins Fruit Farm. You know, you can get some wonderful pies there. Uh, you can go. They actually opened a winery. People don't even know that, but Wilkins now has a winery. Uh, they do. That's open. People don't even know. Uh, and listen, and when you're thinking about, you know, your, your, your holiday meals, you know, you've got, you've got Hemlock Hill Farm. I mean, you can't get any fresher than Hemlock Hill Farm. Holy smokes. And of course, A&S Pork Store and so many other things, Uncle Giuseppe's. But yeah. let's think Yorktown before going someplace else. Is there any way we could get up a list of some of these? We're working on we're working on developing a whole scheme so on this that we could with uh, with our business them community. To people. Yep, yeah. yep. Give but I think it's something as we're because the holidays are going to be here at a snap of a finger. My, my grandmother already yes. called me to put in her order for her turkey for Thanksgiving, so <laughs> it's already coming. Uh, but um, it's I think it's important for people to know that there are many many options here in the town of Yorktown, high quality, good options, and let's think Yorktown first. Yep. All right. Good. We we'll look forward to seeing your list. Can you tell us something about what's happening at the Nutrition Center? Could you sure. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. So the Nutrition Center is getting some great upgrades. 
Um, we're looking forward to uh, reopening it, hopefully, uh, once those upgrades are finished. Um, the walls were uh, just recently redone, and they are now replacing the floor. So there will be a whole, it'll look phenomenal. So they're doing some great uh, physical upgrades to the, to the nutrition center. They're also getting new equipment for the kitchen. Uh, for those who don't know, the nutrition center now doesn't just cook for the town of Yorktown, but now we're cooking for the town of Cortland, the town of Yorktown, and the town of Somers. Right. So we've really become a regional hub, and our staff does a great job in providing these important meals to our seniors who are homebound, and that program continues to grow. Perhaps we could have a meeting there at some point when it's all set up and looking beautiful. Be great. That would be nice. Looking forward to that, absolutely. Other questions you might have? Anybody else? Sarah? Yes, Sarah. <laughs> Take the mask off. Okay, I know <coughs> Excuse me, what? You were talking about toll house for 55 and over. Yep. Is there a chance that the town will have better um, bus service for the senior citizens? Because I know that you have to pay privately. Okay. Is there a way that the town can do that for us? Because if we start moving to these apartments and mm -hmm. condos, Yeah, it's a great question. So when, when Toll Brothers made their presentation, I actually asked them about a shuttle service. Uh, I think it would be a great amenity, um, not just uh, locally, but also for those who are still going to commute down to the city, because there are, you know, as Rosemary uh, points out, there are still uh, individuals 55 and over who are still working down in New York City. Uh, and so one of the things that, we, uh, that I asked them, and I know Councilwoman Roker has brought this up in other presentations, is providing a shuttle service to either the train station or even locally. Um, the other thing I would say is there's a, comp there's a great organization called Ride Connect. Yeah. Uh, Ride Connect will provide free rides for our seniors. Uh, we, you can contact the supervisor's office, our office. I know that Daryl uh, Lindholm here does a lot of work with Ride Connect. They're phenomenal. They were instrumental in the height of the pandemic, getting people's prescriptions, getting groceries for people. Um, but that information is on our website. But if any seniors need, a co need to be connected to this great organization, uh, you can contact my office. Uh, I know Daryl Lindholm can also provide that information as well through the Senior Advisory Committee. But there are other options and there are other services. And again, Ride Connect is free. Do they do locally? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. But they all go outside and have a doctor's appointment at the medical center. And I no longer can drive. No, they'll take you there. They'll take you there? Yeah. They'll take you there. Well, that's to me, not local. That's okay. All right. But if you, need, if you need a ride to your doctor's appointment, they'll take you to your doctor's appointment. If you need a ride to the grocery store, they'll take you to the grocery store. If you need a, they're, they're a wonderful organiz, regional organization that we're trying to get more integrated into the community to provide more options to our seniors, especially, who need help getting around town or getting to appointments. Any other questions? Yep. Uh, if you go back in history, when we first got the bus line in here, I was on a transit board. We came up with a recommendation that we have the school buses use them in a circle around town and the individuals can get on the bus. Uh, I think, I don't remember what the fee was, but we had it for a very inexpensive fee for the seniors for the whole year that they can get on a bus and use it. And the buses would run in various circles around the town. No, it's, it's, it's a very interesting uh, proposal. I haven't seen it myself. I, this is going back before, well, you were, in, were not here at the time. <laughs> and I think you were still in school. Probably. <laughs> well, we came fact, up with that. You may not have been in existence when. Maybe, that too. We'll see. But uh, I'm happy to try to track it down. I think it's a great idea. We just have to figure out the mechanics and the funding behind it. But the Beeline bus service still does run through the yeah, town. Yeah, well, Yorktown. the Beeline bus was something else. But the school buses would run, uh, if they got to a certain point, the uh, county would pick up the cost of re getting a new bus at 25%. The state would pick up the other 25%. So it cost only 50% to buy new buses. Yeah. Well, like I said, I'm happy to look into the proposal. I, I, it's the first I'm hearing of it. Wow.
It was there. I, okay. I did that as a chairman of that committee. And I, again, recognize the need, without a doubt, making, it, making our seniors more mobile and giving them, getting the places they need to go. Uh, but Ride Connect's also another great option. Yeah, you mentioned the J.P. Moore. Yeah. I'd just like to mention that there's a brand new chair yoga class on Tuesdays for seniors and anybody who wants to take chair yoga. I can't recommend it highly enough. At the mall? At the mall, free yep. on Tuesday mornings at 10 o'clock. Yeah. Wow. That's great. Well, they, and they continue to do those type, provide those types of services, which is fantastic. Would that be upstairs, fantastic. downstairs, upstairs? Out, right now, it's outside. When the weather's inclement, it's inside. Okay. So it could be either or, but you'll know just by both. There's right. many, many classes there. Many yeah. Many are also free as well, but that's up to, you know, how, what stage you want to be. Yeah. When will the activities of reopen here? We're working through that right now. Yep, we're still trying to get a, a schedule together. We're slowly getting back. Uh, we're trying to be as, as cautious as we can because we are obviously concerned about everyone's health. And, um, you know, it's, it's, we're still in a pandemic. I mean, that's just the reality. I know, like I said, it's, I understand. I understand, yep, I understand. But we're still trying to be, a combination of the, uh, of the Senior Nutrition Center uh, upgrades that have been taking forever, which we uh, were hoping to get done over the summer, but because of the supply chain issues, um, just didn't come to be. Uh, so we believe that we're going to be back there at some point. Uh, we're very confident we're going to be back there at some point in the not-too-distant future. Uh, we recognize that people look forward to coming here and they look forward to the activities. And I know that we provide a lot of great services for, for our residents, especially our seniors. And to your point earlier, it's also a, I recognize a social uh, outing for many of our seniors, which is very, very, very important, um, especially as we learned uh, one of the results of the pan pandemic, uh, right. seeing the impact it has on people who are just stuck inside and not being able to socialize and see friends and communicate and so, you know, I, so we're trying, we're trying to get there as fast as we can. Yeah. No interaction. I completely recognize that. Completely recognize it. Yep. I know that they've um, they've been doing Fridays up at Granite Knolls, uh, and so they've been offering that throughout the summer, uh, and so uh, I've attended quite a few of them actually. Uh, I still can't dance for the record, mm -hmm. um, but uh, they they have been providing that up to, for our seniors who utilize the nutrition center. Uh, so they have been getting them out outdoors, moving around, seeing people, and it's been a very it's been very well received. But you know, at the same time, there are still us, some people who weren't comfortable even doing that. And so, you know, we're trying to find that that fine balance where it's safety, comfort level, and we're able to provide the right type of service for people. So it's you know, I think we're still we're still trying to find our way through it. I think it's also we have to remember to reach out to people that we know and haven't seen around or people in our neighborhoods to say, hi, how are you? Are you okay? Is there anything you need? And they're probably going to keep you on the phone for a half hour at least because they haven't talked to anybody for a long time. But it's a good thing for them. Uh, it's a good thing for anyone, especially people who live uh, by themselves. So we ought to think about doing that in our own community or with people that we know. More? Yeah, it's a very important. Uh, do you want to talk about the heart catheter unit, or, or do you want me to make a comment on it? You can, you yeah. can take that one. I just want to. I don't do, pretend to be a doctor. Uh, neither do I. <laughs> I only play one on TV. That's right. But, well, I just um, again, I, if I can, just if anyone has any needs, yeah. please reach out to our office, 914-962-5722, extension 200. We're there more times than I can count. Yeah. Uh, we have a great staff. Uh, we've got Jenna, we've got Kira, and we've got a great town board, yeah. and we work together to solve problems. We can't maybe solve every problem, but we try our best to, um, and we try our best to be as, as communicative, communicative as we can and provide as much information as we can. I also see our assessor here, Kim Penner. I know she does a lot of work with our seniors, especially with our STARS, our STAR program, and now with our veterans, exempt, our veterans uh, tax exemption that she's probably going to talk about. No, that's, I'm going to leave that to you. No, 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 I'm going to leave that to you. But again, we've got great people throughout town government here to serve. I know Ed, Ed likes to call us politicians. I kind of cringe at it. We're public servants. We're here to serve you, the public, uh, and we take great pride and, and great honor to do that. So thank you very much, everybody. Thank Appreciate you. It. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Thank you.
And Jenna, thank you. You're always very helpful. Thank you very much. Mama to Mama and Mama to be. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, Kim, our assessor. Here she is. Always very helpful with everyone. Hello, everyone. How are you? Um, I just want to let you know that the supervisor and the town board approved an increase in the veterans exemption that will go into effect on our 2022 assessment roll for 2023 taxes. The, in, the increase in savings is any, could be anywhere from nothing to $65 on one exemption and 108 on the other. The county has also approved this increase, so you will see an additional decrease in tax come 2023. No, there, there is a disability exemption, yes, but it's based on limited income. And you could call our office and we'll give you all the information, okay. Um, anybody have any questions? So say that again, the increase has been? We had the increase in the exemption amount was approved okay. by the town board and the supervisor back in August. Okay. So that increase in exemption causes a decrease in tax. That will apply to the 2022 assessment roll for 2023 town and county tax. The school district did not approve the increase. Who was, uh, I'm sorry, it's, oh. who voted on not approving it with the school district, the school board or? The, the school district? board has the option, as the town had the option, to increase what they call the ceiling amount. They have not done anything. Do they still have a chance to do it, or is it a definite no? Uh, they have, I think it's 60 to 90 days prior to taxable status date, which is May 1st. So if we want to say anything about it, we go to the school board or to the yes. superintendent? To the yes. school board. school board. Thank you. So they have chosen not to address it? I don't know, okay. to be honest with you. My part is the town. Go I ahead. did help them through okay. getting the um, exemption on the school bill, I think it was six years ago, five years ago. Thank you. And that was it. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank You're you, welcome. Kim. You're always very helpful. Thank you. Thanks. Anybody have, anybody have any, have questions any questions for her? Any questions for Kim? Do you have questions? I'm sorry? <clears throat> For what? The school board. Was it Lakeland? No, for the town or both school boards that did not address it? I, do, I don't know. I'm out of the loop with the school district. I did not get anything from them. Either so one. Unless Either I one. get something Either from one. them, okay. I can't do anything. Yes, Tony? Should this be something that we. You can. As veterans, you would go to the school board and ask. Yes. Okay. I'm sorry, I didn't hear. I don't hear that. As veterans, you should go to the school board. Is that what we should say? If you want the increase, if the veterans are looking to increase the amount of the ceiling on the school district side, that's the business of the school board. So you would want to take that want to, address it to the a board. meeting and address it with them. And this applies only to veterans, right? I'm sorry? Only to veterans. You're just speaking right. It's a veterans exemption. Okay. Very good. Okay. Everybody thank okay? You. Yeah, thank you All very right. much. Great. You're always very helpful, Kim. Thank you. So we got to um, I, I would like to announce that... Um, Hudson Valley Hospital Center, who is very generous always and offers us lunch, 
is opening up uh, probably, let's see, what are we in October? I would say the beginning of next year, opening up a CART heart catheter unit. Uh, it's going to make it easier for people, God forbid, uh, you have an emergency, you would be taken probably to Hudson Valley Hospital and they would have to send you someplace else. Uh, they will not, they will have a unit there so they won't have to do that. So as this situation progresses, we'll have more information for you and someone will be here to talk about it to tell you exactly what that means. I'm not a doctor, so I'm not gonna go into detail, but I will tell you that it's a, it's a wonderful thing for the area. Uh, we've had Kim, I wanna remind you all that our next meeting is November 19th. I don't know where it will be. It may be here, I think, and I don't know how you feel about having a meetings here, if you're comfortable with them here. Uh, we don't know, it depends on what the town decides. Apropos of that, I would like to start an di uh, email distribution list. When I do an email distribution list, I do not list people's email in the public, in the two line. I do it as a BCC so nobody else sees your email, because I understand that some people have had problems with that. Right. But I would like to start that, because we could then send you um, notice of where the meeting's yeah. going to be. So before you leave, if you would come up and sign, um, sign my book for me, I, that would be great. I would be great. Okay, anybody have anything they'd like to ask? Well, come up and say so. Yeah. Tell us, give us your name and tell us. This is kind of out of place for this meeting, but Rosemary's given me permission to mention that I have a motorized wheelchair. It's in excellent condition. It was $40,000. It's not being used, and I would like to donate it to anyone who could use it. It's in good condition. It's, I'm still charging it. The batteries still work. I would love to bring it to someone who could use this wheelchair because it, it was my husband's, and he's in heaven, and he wants somebody to have it. <laughs> so please, please, if you want to call me, my number is 914-649-9000. I'm Kathleen Macy. I'm on the internet somewhere. Uh, you can reach me almost any time. But please, if you know of anybody who could use this wheelchair, Listen please up. contact me. And could I'm, you repeat your phone number, number again, please? Re repeat the number. My number is 914-649-8475. Well, no, we don't, nothing set up for that. No, <laughs> good idea. But. I, I, I'm mentioning, I'm mentioning it to you because I know you each have two friends, <laughs> who you could tell, who would tell two friends. <laughs> Please don't hesitate. It, it's free and it's in good, excellent condition, and I'll bring it there. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. much. That's good to know. Okay. Once again, our next meeting is Friday, November 19th. Meeting place to be announced. Uh, don't forget to watch us on cable if you miss a meeting and also uh, getting other interesting Yorktown information. Channel 20 for Optimum, Channel 33 for Verizon. So with that, I will ask that the meeting be adjourned and we look forward to seeing you all next month. Thank you so much, thank you.